find out the desire of the Holy Spirit. We want this year to let go of our personal aspirations, to let go of our personal desires, to let go of our personal ideas, and to find out what it is that God wants, not just for us personally, but what the Holy Spirit wants for us. And one place we want to look at, and we're going to spend three weeks looking at, is where God wants us, what God's desire is for us in worship. You know, the Holy Spirit comes to us when we worship. Perhaps the closest when we worship. And do we desire to connect with the Holy Spirit in truth and power when we worship Him? Or are we distracted by what worship should look like? What worship should sound like? What worship should be practiced like or lived like? And less about who we're worshiping or how we're connected to that worship. So for the next three weeks, we're going to be looking more at worship, more at worship, and, and more at what the Holy Spirit's desire is for our worship. My sermon today is titled, Drinking at the Messiah's well, and, and we know the story of John 4, don't we? The story of the woman at the well. It's a story we know. Jesus actually was seeking to avoid the Pharisees. He was seeking to avoid the scribes who had been attacking his ministry. And so he was on his way to Galilee, which put him on pass to go through Samaria. And as he was going through Samaria, he found this woman who was at the well that we know the story of. She was at the well of Jacob. The well of Jacob was, it was a well that Jacob had left his sons, and it was a well where the Samaritans had come to focus most of their community, most of their relationship, because it was this holy spot that was connected to their history. And so there is this woman, and she's out at this well on on, on this mountain, on her, on Jesus' way to Galilee and Samaria. And the problem is, you know, that she's there at noontime, the sixth hour. It, this is a problem. And, and perhaps because we don't count hours like the ninth hour, this third hour, the sixth hour, we don't realize this is a problem. Because uh, when is it hottest in the day? Yeah around between noon and two in that area, right? So if you were a woman, and, and you were responsible for collecting the water of your family, you probably didn't go at this time. So then the question is, what is this woman doing at this well at the hottest time of the day collecting water? It's almost as if she may have been avoiding the other women, who certainly rose early in the morning when it was cool, and went and collected her water. So then the question comes, why would someone want to avoid the other people in their community? There might be something about this woman. There might be something wrong with this woman. There might be something wrong with her relationship with the other women in this community. 
There might be some issues going on that the context of the story needs to bring out for us. But right now, all we know is that Jesus found her seemingly by accident as he was on his way to Galilee to avoid the Pharisees. And he comes upon this well at this famous site, and there she is at the hottest part of the day, drawing water. Now, in verse 7 it says, A woman from Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give what? Me a drink. For his disciples had gone to the city to buy food. You see, because the disciples certainly would not approve of him. If they were there, they would not let Jesus speak to this woman. And so the story goes on, picking it up in verse, verse 9. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, would ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have absolutely no dealings with the Samaritans. You see, Jesus asked her from a, for a drink from her well, but she really needs a drink from the Messiah's well. She may drink from Jacob's well, but the Holy Spirit wants her to drink from Jesus as well. Jesus may ask for water from Jacob's well, but really the issue is, will she drink of the Messiah's well? You see, there was this division. They were divided. There were these problems. You know, first of all, men and women didn't talk to each other in private because that's how rumors get started. It was a very different And so the disciples, you know, if they wouldn't have stopped Jesus from talking to her because of the fact that she was a Samaritan, they would have stopped him from talking to her because of the fact that it was a man and a woman. Even though they're in an open space, they are alone. Who knows what they might be saying to each other? On top of that, the Samaritans were... Not very well respected. Uh, they weren't allowed to worship at, at, at the temple in Jerusalem. I mean, they could, but they had to stay contained to the court of the Gentiles, the very outer area. They weren't allowed to go into the more inner places where the true worship happened. They had to stay on the courts of the Gentiles. And, and, and the women wouldn't even have been allowed even to go that far. You see, this dates all the way back to when the Jews came out of exile. The Samaritans asked if they could assist the Jews in rebuilding the temple because they had come to worship Yahweh in the land when the Jews went away. Now, there's a whole sermon we could talk about. Is the Samaritans found Yahweh when the Jews went away. And the Jews came back, and they're like, we just want to help you build this temple to Yahweh. And the Jews were like, absolutely no, no way. We got into trouble by associating with the wrong crowd, and you are not welcome. And this is still going on in Jesus' day. And, and so there's division. And this division has developed into uh, this war of worship. Where do we worship? At the temple in Jerusalem? Where you banned us. Or here on this mountain at this well where we, we can trace it back to Jacob. We, we, we know that this goes back to a patron. See, what do you do when you're cast out? What do you do when you're treated like a second-class citizen? What do you do when it's went on for hundreds and hundreds of years? become ingrained in what you think is right and, 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 and what they think is wrong. And, and, and this is kind of the problem with worship. We think that there's a right way and we think that the people who do it differently uh, than us are doing it the wrong way. You know, we, we, we think that we worship this way, they worship that way. No. That's drinking from our own well. We don't want to drink from our well. 
We want to drink from the Messiah's well. So let's look at the water that Jesus draws. Let's look at the power that Jesus draws. Let's look at what Jesus says about worship. So in verse 10, it says, Jesus answered her. If you only knew. If you only knew. The what? The gift of God. The gift of God. Let's read this together. Let's start the quotes. Let's read this together. If you knew the, the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink. You would what? You would ask him, and he would have given to you what? Living water. See, here we all were, were arguing over who should worship where, how they should worship, who is acceptable to God, who is not acceptable to God, and what does Jesus say? If you only knew what worship was really about, if you only understood what the real issue is in worship, if you only knew the gift of God, you see, we can be arguing, we can be fighting over what worship should be, where worship should be, what worship should be like, and miss that God is there in our presence. Just as this woman is wondering, where do I worship? How do I worship? Why am I unaccepted? But God is there in her presence. And maybe the point of Jesus is that real worship is when you realize that you have come into the presence of the Messiah. And you've not come to drink of the music. You've not come to drink of the preacher. You've not come to drink of the environment. But you've come to drink of the living water of the Messiah as well. If you only knew the gift of God, you would not engage in such foolishness. If you only knew what God has given for If you only knew what God has sacrificed for you, if you only knew the grief Jesus took from these Pharisees that drove him on this backyard path, if you only knew the grief he's going to get when he gets to Galilee and goes back to his own land and has to declare a prophet will never be welcome in his own home, if you only knew the constant attack by satanic forces Jesus will face up until he gives his last breath for us, Stop the silliness of what worship is and isn't. And you would stop and realize you worship because the Messiah is in your presence. Amen. You would say, just give me a drink. You would have asked him. And you know what? Did you hear it? If you would ask him, he would give it to you. Do we not drink from the Messiah as well because we are not asking him for it? Could it be that we don't drink from the Messiah as well because we're too busy telling the Messiah what the water is like in his well? Instead of just asking Jesus, Wherever I end up this morning, wherever I go, Jesus, just let me drink from your well. Jesus, just let me be filled with your water. Jesus, just let me be refreshed by your truth. You see, he asked for a drink, but it was her who needed a drink from his well. What well are we drinking from? Where are we getting our water from? How are we being refreshed? I don't know about you, but I go out into this world every day. And if you are truly like Christ, if you are truly a Christian, and you are truly engaging in the ministry of Jesus, not just on Sabbath morning, maybe if you're really spiritual at prayer meeting or fire and vespers, but if you are engaging in a true Christian life, then it's very probable, or I would be concerned if not, you're being harassed just like Jesus was being harassed wherever he went. There will be forces in your life trying to deter you. There will be forces in your life trying to change you. There will be forces in your life 
that are trying to beat you back because that's what happens when you drink from his well. So then where are you getting refreshed from? Let me tell you, J Jacob was a man. Jacob was a man. Jacob was a fine man. Jacob was a good man, but his well will not refresh you. There are lots of things that men make that we try to refresh ourselves from, but we can't be refreshed from refreshments that come from men. If we're going to be refreshed, we must drink from the Messiah's well. The only refreshment that matters is refreshment that comes from Jesus. And so in verse 12, our story continues when she begins to ask him, what are you talking about? Are you greater than Jacob? I mean, I get refreshed from Jacob's well. Are you greater than HBO? Can you give me more enjoyment than Hulu? Are you better even than WG2S? I don't care where you get your refreshment from. I don't care where you get your break from. If it's not Jesus, it's Jacob's well. Amen. Oh, there's water in Jacob's well, but it don't taste like the well of the Messiah. Even good wells. Jacob was a good well. Jacob was a good man. It's not Jesus. You greater than our father Jacob, he who, who gave us as well to drink from, he himself drank from it, his sons and his livestock, and they became the lineage of the Jews. Yes, but the one who is the point of the lineage of the Jews is there. Why are we still drinking from old wells that lead to the new well? It's time to stop drawing. Jacob's well. It's time to draw from the Messiah's well. So Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water, everyone who drinks of, of, of the things of this world, everyone who drinks of wells made by men, dug by men, even good men, they will thirst again. They cannot satisfy. They can quench but you get thirsty again. So Jesus says, but whoever, whoever would drink of my well, whoever would drink of this water, whoever would drink of the Messiah's well, the well that I give will never be thirsty again. For the water that I give will become in him a spring of water, welling up to what? Eternal life. Oh, there are lots of places you can draw water from. There are lots of places, trust me, there are lots of places you can get temporary reprieve from. There are, are lots of places that will give you temporarily rest. There are lots of places that, that can temporarily wet the whistle. There are lots of places that, that, that can, can... But the well that Jesus gives you, the water that Jesus gives you, becomes a spring inside of you and keeps watering you continually. You don't get thirsty because it's always with you. You don't have to go to the well in the heat of the day at noon out of embarrassment. Can't hack it anymore. I gotta go to my well. Your well is with you. Your well is in you. And your well continually feeds you. Because your well is the Messiah's well. And it is a spring that continually empowers your spiritual walk. And so in verse 15, the woman said, Sir, if there is such a well, sir, if there is such a water, sir, if there is such a drink, please, sir, give me this water. I know you came to me and you asked me for a drink, but what I have is inferior to the water that you speak of. Please, sir, if there is such a well, give it to me. If there is such a water, give it to me, that I will not be thirsty, that I would not have to come here and draw water at noon in the embarrassment of the fact that I can't come here with the other women.
see in the heat of the day, we're likely, we're likely to end up drawing water from strange places. When those around us are thirsty, we're likely to go to weird places to find refreshment. And she did too. Embarrassment because of what the other ladies said about her. Embarrassment because of her old life. Embarrassment because of her shame. But she didn't know better than we do. She was drinking from the Messiah's well from the second she heard of such a thing. We know of such a thing. Of where do we drink? Of where do we get refreshed? Where do we go in the midst of the day? We don't have to go any place if we have invited the living water into our life. He is there constantly living out his refreshing springs within us. And what was her response? She went and she told everyone. She told everyone. Jesus said, go tell your husband to come. Ah, she couldn't. Uh, well, I got five. Which one should I go get? Do you see why she's at the well at noon and not in the morning? Because she's stolen everyone's husband who comes in the morning. She didn't have a lawful husband. But she knew that Jesus was calling her. But so I perceive you're a prophet. What are you doing? Who are you? Why do I need you? I just want to drink from your well. I'm not sure how to find the Messiah, but I know that you have spoken about his water. Just need to drink from his well. She needed his well. She wanted his well. She sought his well. In verse 21, Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming and neither is on this mountain or in Jerusalem that you will worship the Father. The hour is coming and is now when true worshipers will worship how? No, in, spirit. in spirit and in truth. In truth. For the Father is seeking. What is the Father seeking? People to worship him in spirit and truth. Look. We can have the truth. We can talk about the Sabbath. We can talk about the prophecies. Come on, people. We can talk about the Levitical law of, of, of Leviticus 11. We can talk about all these things. We got the truth and we got it down. But what about the Spirit? The Jews had the truth and they were still excluding the Gentiles. The Gentiles had the Spirit, but they didn't have the truth. They're out there worshiping at this dumb well because it's the best that they got. But they're doing the best that they got. Now, what the Father wants to do is bring together the truth and the spirit. So that there will be spirit and truth. truth. No one drinks from the Messiah's well without spirit and truth. truth. For God is what? Spirit. And those who worship him must what? Worship him. In what? In spirit. Spirit and truth. There is no other real worship. As my grandma used to tell me, Vince, you can be so right that you're wrong. You can carry this truth business so far. You have no spirit. But he wants both. 
So he wants you to get rid of truth, right? right? He wants you to add what? Spirit. That's why, you know, I, 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 I mean, I, I, it's more than, don't get me wrong. I don't want to be misunderstood. I'm glad that you're all here, and I'm glad that we're filling out. And we, we've got a few empty seats, but normally by this time, if it's not a long weekend, we're, we're full at this time. But wouldn't it be great that if at 11 o'clock, Marvin, everyone was here to worship because they didn't just come for the truth portion of worship? <laughs> Because it's about truth and spirit. You can't have one without the other. And so when she realized this, she got excited and she wanted to share it. And she went and she told everyone. She went and she told everyone, I have found what? The Messiah. I have found him. I have tasted of a better water than Jacob. I have tasted of a better way than our well, our heritage. We have to let go of our tradition of the well of Jacob because I have found the real thing. I have found the Messiah. And when you find the Messiah, there's no more shame. When you find the Messiah, you know, the things that she was hiding from, the reason she was coming at noon, it didn't matter anymore. In fact, her past, her history became the power, Marvin. It became the power of her testimony. Amen. I was lost, but I am now. I had to go to the well at noon because I was embarrassed, but now... Look, you know me, she could say. You, you know that I am the last one to come bursting in here and to tell you about the Messiah. But I found a water that is so good. I found a spring that is so alive that it is worth my shame, that it is worth my embarrassment, that it is worth what you guys are going to say about me. I don't care what you say about me anymore. You don't have to whisper behind my back anymore because I have found living water. And so many, many Samaritans said, well, this water, if this well, if this drink can change her, sign us up. Many Samaritans believed because of this woman's testimony. Because he told me, she said, he told me all that I ever did. I'm ashamed of in my past. I have sins I don't want everyone to know. I have sins that I don't want to be a part of a public testimony. I mean, Julio's got guts, man. When he preached the other week, man, he 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 was he was out there, right? Amen. Because his former shame became the testimony of what Jesus did in his life. They expect sermons from choirs. They expect sermons from Pharisees. They expect sermons from scribes. They expect sermons from the holy people. They don't expect sermons from harlots. They don't expect sermons from fornicators. They don't expect sermons from adulterers. But this woman, on a chance meeting, do you hear me? On a chance meeting, at a chance well, because Jesus was avoiding Pharisees who were haggling him, on his way to Galilee to be rejected by his own people, he came upon a woman at a well who Invited her to drink from the Messiah's well. If Jacob's well is good enough for you, keep going there. If Jacob's well refreshes you, keep going there. It will never take your shame. 
it will never wash you clean. It will never become an automatic power in your life, welling up new and more levels of spiritual growth. Only drinking from the Messiah's well. Only drinking from the Messiah's well. Only when your truth is brought into touch with his spirit. Most of us have truth. We could use a little bit more spirit. He wants to marry truth and spirit to our worship. That we may drink from the Messiah's well. Two more sermons on worship. Stay with me, because next week we're going to be dancing with David. Marvin, can you lead us? choice to decide how it is we're going to worship God. We have the choice to decide if status quo is okay. We have the choice to decide if Sabbath at our own convenience on the weeks that we can make it. We have the choice to decide. Is it enough to catch the last 15 minutes of church on our way out to someplace else? We have the choice to decide. Do we really want to be filled with this sweet spirit? Do we really want to feel the Holy Spirit in this place? Because the Holy Spirit in this place starts a lot earlier than most of us. We have the choice to decide, is truth enough or do we want truth and spirit? We have the choice to decide. If we're really going to follow Jesus, or we're just going to gather at noon in the heat of the sun, at the well of Jacob to cover our shame so that at the end of Sabbath we can say, well, I got 20 minutes of the pastor's last thought in. We have the choice to decide do we really want to follow Jesus? Do we really want to be disciples? Do we really want the Spirit in us? We're doing baptisms in a couple weeks 
not mean that decision is a place on your card to make that decision. Maybe through this series on worship, you will give something back to Jesus. Maybe it will be your life. Marvin, lead us in the last two verses. that you baptize us with the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you fill us with the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we are halfway through the year of our sermon series, of our demonic theme, of the desires of the Holy Spirit, and many of us have not even come to the place where we personally desire the Holy Spirit. Father, in these next three weeks, make there be a heart change in us. For we can't do anything without your glorious, without your wonderful, without your powerful, without your self-refreshing, self-fulfilling Holy Spirit in this place. In Jesus' name.